This video reviews the procedures for how to take a chlorophyll A sample for the Cooperative Lakes Monitoring Program, often called the CLMP. The CLMP is a program of the Michigan Department of Environmental Quality and supported by numerous partners. About 230 Michigan Inland Lakes participate in the CLMP every year. The CLMP is part of the Michigan Clean Water Corps, also called MyCorps. If you have questions about MyCorps or the CLMP, you can contact Paul Steen at the email shown. Much of the basic information about how the CLMP works is covered in our Secchi Disk Transparency video and our Total Phosphorus video. All of that basic information applies to sampling chlorophyll A as well. To learn more about any of the topics listed here, please watch either of those videos and visit the MyCore website. To sample chlorophyll A in the CLMP, you must attend at least one training. There is an in-person annual training event that is held in April or May, and there is also an online webinar that is held shortly after the in-person training. Either of these trainings will fulfill the training requirement. Watching this video does not fulfill the requirement. This video is meant to serve as a refresher only. Chlorophyll is the green, photosynthetic pigment found in algae and other plants. Chlorophyll is an important indicator because it directly represents the amount of algae in a lake. Lakes that produce a lot of algae are higher in nutrients, and if levels get too high, the lake can be in danger of undesirable algae blooms and fish kills. There are various forms of chlorophyll. We check for chlorophyll A in the CLMP. It consists of a hydrocarbon molecule with a tail and ring structure, and this ring is held together by an atom of magnesium. Chlorophyll A is the most common form of chlorophyll found in the algae in lakes in Michigan and the upper Midwest. You will take five samples per year for chlorophyll A, once a month from May through September. Some lakes located in northern Michigan will be scheduled to take their September sample in late August. To see the exact dates for lakes in your county, refer to the chlorophyll schedule. Make every attempt to collect all five chlorophyll samples in order to get the most representative data for your lake's summer conditions. At least four samples must be taken in order for us to calculate averages and enter the data into a long-term trend graph. This is an example of a depth integrated composite water sampler that volunteers use in the CLMP. Before heading out on the lake, make sure that all of the pieces are accounted for. After getting to your proper sampling location, disassemble the sampler and rinse the large amber bottle with lake water. Be careful not to lose any parts of your sampler. It happens to someone every year. After rinsing, reassemble the sampler. The next step is to take a Secchi disk measurement. View our Secchi disk video to review those step-by-step -step instructions. Sunlight is able to penetrate into water about twice the Secchi depth. Since our goal is to get a water sample that contains algae from the entire water column where it is possible for algae to grow, we need to lower our integrated water sampler to twice the Secchi depth. Use a clothespin to mark the measured line at twice the Secchi depth. If you are sampling in a lake where twice the Secchi depth would be greater than the total lake depth, mark your line with the clothespin at three feet less than the total lake depth so that when you release the sampler, it does not hit the bottom of the lake. Put the measured line in the water to avoid the line getting tangled when sampling. Then, hold the sampler at the water surface and let it go, allowing it to free fall through the water column until the clothespin is at the water surface. When the line is taut, retrieve the sampler at a slow, steady rate. Check the water level in your bottle. You want the bottle to be more than half full, but not completely full. If the bottle is completely full, or it's less than half full, repeat your sampling. You'll have to adjust the rate of your retrieval. Adjusting the level of the glass tubes in the bottle stopper may also help water enter the bottle more or less easily. 
All of this takes some practice and several tries may be necessary until you find the method that works best for your lake. Swirl the sample bottle to gently mix the water and then use a small portion of the sample to rinse the two rectangular amber bottles. After rinsing, fill both of your rectangular bottles with the water sample to just below the neck. Take the magnesium carbonate dropper bottle and shake it vigorously. Add five drops of magnesium carbonate to the chlorophyll sample in each bottle and swirl gently to mix. This magnesium carbonate acts as a preservative. Finally, store the rectangular bottles in a cooler bag with an ice pack out of the direct light. You have successfully collected the water sample. Now it's time to go back to shore and filter it. The best place to filter a chlorophyll sample is indoors, by a sink, and out of direct sunlight. Make sure you have all of the equipment listed. Ready to go? First, unscrew and open the filter holder. Use tweezers to pick up and move the filter. Never use your fingers. The filter is a glossy and opaque white circle. Be sure not to use the filter separators, which are translucent and look more like tissue paper. Center the filter on the screen and place the O-ring on top of the filter. Screw the filter holder back together until it is moderately tight and place it to the side for the moment. Grab the syringe and the small piece of clear plastic tubing. You can push the tubing onto the syringe. It doesn't fit perfectly, but it will not slip off if you work at it. Swirl or invert one of the amber bottles to mix. Rinse the syringe by drawing up sample water until the syringe is full, and then empty it. Then fill it up to the 60 milliliter line. With the syringe pointing up, tap it to force air bubbles to the top. Push the syringe plunger until the end of the plunger is lined up with the 50 milliliter mark. Attach the filter holder to the syringe. Like the tubing, it won't snap into place, but you can get it to fit snugly. Slowly push the chlorophyll sample through the filter holder and adjust your pressure to achieve a rapid drop rate. Pushing too hard may rip the filter, so avoid excessive pressure. As you push the plunger, make sure that no water is leaking out the side of the filter holder. If your sample has a lot of algae or other particles in it, it may become too difficult to push the full 50 milliliters of sample through the filter. In these situations, stop pushing and note how much water you were able to filter by reading the side of the syringe there is a place on the data sheet for you to record this information. After filtering the water, separate the filter holder from the syringe and unscrew it. Using a safety pin and tweezers, Fold the filter in quarters with the algae on the inside. The filter will probably stick a bit to the filter holder, and it requires a steady hand and some practice to do this job smoothly. Remember, never touch the filter with your fingers.
put the folded filter into a sample vial and cap it. Place a filled out sample label onto the vial lengthwise so that none of the label is wrapped upon itself. Let's take a look at what a correctly filled out sample label looks like. You need to use a fine tipped permanent black marker to fill out the sample labels. In addition to the basic lake information, write CA in the parameter code box and write MGCO3 which stands for magnesium carbonate, into chemicals added. Remember, you added magnesium carbonate in an earlier step. On the label for your second sample, write rep next to the lake name. This is short for replicate. You now have one sample complete. Congratulations! Now you get to do it all over again with your second sample bottle. Once both samples are complete, Wrap the vials completely with aluminum foil to keep all light out. This foil wrapping step is critical. Unwrapped samples cannot be accepted for laboratory analysis. Write your lake's name and the sample month on the foil packet. The samples go into a Ziploc bag with your lake name, county, and field ID number. Fold the data sheet, place it into a separate Ziploc bag so it stays dry, and place it in the bag with your samples. Storing your data sheet with the samples is a good way to make sure the paperwork never gets lost. And then everything goes into the freezer until it is time to turn it in. Each lake is assigned to a sample drop-off location depending on the county in which the lake is located. There are two turn-in dates for chlorophyll A. The first sample turn-in will include your May, June, and July chlorophyll samples, and the turn-in date will fall near the end of July. The second turn-in will include your August and September chlorophyll samples, as well as the summer phosphorus sample if your lake is enrolled in summer phosphorus. This turn-in date will be sometime in September. To find the exact dates and turn-in location for your lake, please see the chlorophyll schedule. Remember, all samples must be turned in frozen and must be received prior to noon on the scheduled date. At the end of the field season, your chlorophyll results will be ready. Remember that at least four samples must be received in order for us to calculate averages and enter the data into a long-term trend graph for your lake. Thanks for watching! We hope this video was helpful for reminding you how to collect a chlorophyll A sample in the Cooperative Lakes Monitoring Program.